Okay, so before we get started, just a trigger warning is I'm going to show some fun pictures and I'm also going to talk about like murder and suicide and abuse. So just so you know what you're getting into. And this is the BU in the most complicated way possible. <laughs> so you can see how all the strings, none of them are just like linear and there's not just a very happy timeline. So if you don't understand this today, I you are just with the rest of us. It will take a bit of time. Yeah. So this is kind of a general outline of how I'm going to be doing it. So I'm going to introduce the boys. How do they meet? How do they fall apart? What they do to fix it? The highlight reels and then Map of the Soul 7, where we are now, and then some additional resources if you want to keep continue learning about it, and then questions. Yeah, you're feel free to ask questions about the topic if I cover something like as it's covering. That way it's just a bit easier to cover, <laughs> I guess. So the boys, I'm going to kind of go through just like a family tree of them in a way and just a bit about them. So Kim Sok Jin, his mother is dead. I think she died when he was 12. Um, his father is alive and is very important in the storyline. And he's kind of the main character, but also sort of a villain. And he loves his friends, and he'll do anything for them. So this is just family tree. So his mother died. His father's like a businessman. And that puts a bit of pressure on him to be this, you know, son of a businessman. OK, Minyungi, his mother is dead. His father is alive. And he likes to play with matches. <laughs> And he also likes to write mus music. Um, and Young Cook isn't dead. For those who know, they know. And we'll get into it. <laughs> but his mother did die of suicide. She lit the house on fire. Um, his father is alive, but he kind of distanced himself from Yungi, just because, you know, if your wife died, I feel like you, you have a bit of guilt, a bit of burden. Yeah. OK, Jung Ho Suk. His family tree is a bit messy <laughs> but we can assume so far that his mother is alive but she did abandon him when he was i think seven his father we can assume is alive but we've never met he's never been mentioned in the storyline and he is sick but not really sick and then he's the main dancer in all the universes so yep <laughs> right so his parents as far as we know they're alive they might be dead we don't really know Hey, Kim Nam Joon, his mother is alive, his father is alive, but he is sick. And he also has a younger brother who is alive. And he works too hard because his parents don't work and he doesn't want his younger brother to work to take care of the family. So he just, he kind of takes care of everyone. And so his younger brother is only a year younger than him. Um, his mother quit her job recently. And then his father is sick. Okay, Park Jimin. So his, both his parents are alive, and he's always in hospitals. We'll talk about that. And water isn't really related to his trauma. For those of you who have seen the music video, I'll explain that also. <laughs> but his parents are more kind of like country club parents. Like they're always trying to like gain upper ranks, and they just they don't want to like see their son as a burden, so they just kind of shove him into hospitals and hoping no one notices. <laughs> Okay, Kim Taehyung. So his mother is alive and she got remarried. Uh, his father is alive but also gets murdered. Uh, and he has an older sister who's alive. And he's kind of a psychic. And so this is kind of a family tree. His uncle is mentioned in the storyline and he just helps him with a little fun side quest. But yeah, his parents are alive. Um, there's not much other info. Okay, Jun Jung Cook. So his parents are both alive. His mother remarried because their father left him. And now he has a stepbrother and a stepfather. And he just kind of deserves better. <laughs> um, and right now he's in his emo era. And we will <laughs> we'll talk about it. <laughs> and so, this is a, the family tree. And his father left just because he was like, this is too difficult for me to take care of a child and be married. And so Jungkook kind of blames himself for that. Like, I wasn't enough of a reason for my father to stay. 
And his stepfather and his stepbrother are kind of just like classical evil step things and just verbally abuse him. So he deserves better. <laughs> okay, so let me catch up on my notes. Okay, so one fateful day. So Jin was studying in America and he came to Korea and he wanted to go to the high school that his dad went to. And so he decides to do that. But on the first day, he was late to school along with some six other boys that we recognize. <laughs> and they got detention together for being late. And with this detention, they would like clean up things. They would play a lot in a storage room. And in the storage room, they kind of bonded. And they just kind of got to know each other and they became friends. Okay, so now as friends, on June 12th, so I'm not going to mention a lot of dates, but there are some really important ones, and June 12th is one of those days. So June 12th, they're like, hey, let's just skip school, because who likes to go to school? <laughs> um, and so they decided to go to the beach, because supposedly there is a magical rock on this beach that if you yell out your wishes and your desires, that they would come true. And so on this really hot summer day, they decide to go, but when they get there, it turns out there's construction going on, and so the rock is nowhere to be seen. But they decide, let's just yell out our thoughts anyways, and it's just drowned out by all the construction noise. And yeah, that's their beach day. And we got this iconic Polaroid photo. So this is where I'm gonna read a first excerpt from the notes. And so these notes, they're actually, they're really cool, <laughs> let me tell you. So this is, the notes are structured in a way where it has like the member whose like perspective it is and then the date and then the year. And the year is, people like are guessing that the year is related to Jin's age because Jin is kind of the main character. And so this is June 12th, year 19. And this is a perspective from Yoongi. So I cut school without thinking, but I had nowhere to go. It was hot and I had no money and nothing to do. It was Namjoon who first proposed we go to the sea. The others seemed excited about it, but I didn't care either way. Do you have any money? Hearing my question, Namjoon told the others to dig into their pockets. A few coins and even fewer bills. We can't go. Why don't we walk? That must have been Tay. Namjoon's expression seemed to tell him to use his head and think before speaking. Everyone but me was jabbering, laughing for no reason, and roaming around. I fell back as I wasn't in the mood. The sun was broiling, it was midday, and there's no shade under the trees. The asphalt road had no sidewalks, and every time a car passed, it would kick up a thick cloud of dust. Let's go there. It was Taehyung. Or was it Hosak? I wasn't paying attention anyways, but it must have been one of those two. I didn't see any point of getting in there. Should I tell them to go on without me? I turned my head and almost bumped into someone. It was Jimin. He stood there as still as a statue. His face was trembling down to the smallest muscle as if he seen something terrifying. Are you okay? He seemed aware, unaware of this question. And we'll get into what happened to Jim in there <laughs> soon after. But you can see Yungi wasn't really into it, but the others, he just decided to tag along because as a friend group, I think a lot of us can relate. Like, oh, if someone goes, and just everyone might as well go. So they spent the time at the beach. But like all good things, can't stay friends forever. And so Jin being like the son of a businessman and especially going to his father's school, he just, he would start telling the principal things that they were doing. Like, yeah, we're hanging out here, we're doing this. And one day he told them, oh yeah, we hang out in the storage room. And so the principal decided to go there one day. And that's when Jungkook and Yoongi were in there. And so the principal ends up slapping Jungkook and Yoongi just doesn't want to deal with this, so then he ends up, I think, pushing the principal or something, and he gets expelled. So with Yoongi expelled, and it just starts this chain of falling out because, well, now someone's not here that's in the friend group, and so Namjoon's like, okay, well, I don't have to be here. So he just, like, full-time works so that way he can pay the bills for his whole family with his father being sick. And Jimin ends up in the hospital because that's just what he tends to do. <laughs> and because he, he keeps having seizures. And so now I'm going to kind of talk about why he has seizures. And this wasn't revealed until the notes 2 came out. And there's a lot of speculation, especially about this sign that we've seen in videos and stuff. And so this sign, it points to the flower 
Arboretum. <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce it. But one day, Jimin and his class, when he was like really young, they decided to go on a field trip. And after the field trip was done at this flower place, he's like, well, I'm a big boy now. So he wants like to go home by himself. And so he starts wandering off from the rest of his class, but it starts raining and he finds himself really tired. And so he just decides, I'm just gonna stop in this warehouse. And so he goes into the warehouse and he's like, I'm gonna take a quick nap. And so he takes a quick nap. And then when he wakes up, he hears like noises and he ends up making eye contact with a boy who's inside the warehouse. And that boy is like tied up from his hands and he's about his age. And so from this day, he just, he, it's part of his trauma. What I assume is instead of like water, I think it's more related to rain, just because it was a rainy day when he saw this boy. And so with the boy, I'll read a, I'm gonna read a note that kind of explains the situation. But the boy sees Jimin, but he doesn't tell on anyone because the kidnapper walks in. And so he doesn't want to, the little boy who is being abused doesn't want Jimin to get caught. And so Jimin escapes successfully, but the little boy doesn't. And we don't really hear about what happens to this boy. We just assume maybe he's rescued, but yeah, it's a bit sad. <laughs> so yeah. And so with all these following, like falling outs, Jin decides to just go back to America because, well, there's no friends there to talk to anyways. Let's see. Okay, so this is Jimin's point of view. And it's from, okay, August 12th. So this is just like a flashback and that's like all we really know of what's happening. Okay, so that day I had run into the dark storage building. I was dripping wet and early April air felt cold. I squatted in one corner. I was glad to get away from the rain, but soon I was trembling from cold. I covered myself with ripped papers and wrappings from the ground and curled up in a ball. I woke up at the clanging sound at the iron door closing, and I heard someone breathing. I stayed all curled up like before without moving a muscle. It was dark inside the storage building. There were shelves with things piled in a row, things I couldn't tell what they were for. I smelled rain and dirt. I couldn't tell what was going on, but I knew one thing. I should not be discovered. The place was filled with tension. When my eyes adjusted to the dark, I began to see the inside. The storage building was the size of a school classroom. I was hiding by the back door. There was a tiny room where the podium would be if it was a classroom. A faint light gleamed in from the room's window. Then I heard a panting sound, like a signal to let me know someone was there. I stood up. I knew I shouldn't, but I crept towards the window. I knew I shouldn't look at what was beyond the window, but I still crawled towards the window. My legs trembled. The raindrops dripped from my hair and trickled down my neck. At that moment, a small white hand suddenly appeared at the window and disappeared. I gasped, frozen to the spot. Every cell in my body screamed for me to run away, but my legs wouldn't move. I went blank, and I heard someone whistling outside. The door clanked and opened. I jumped and crawled under the desk to hide. A man came in and looked for something, making the clanking sound of metal scraping against metal. The man walked into the room, leaving the door open so I could look inside. It was dark there too, but the things inside were visible. It looked like a room for storing fertilizer. He walked in and with his legs apart, he looked down on something. The man's eyes fell on a small boy laying on the floor, all curled up. He had bruises on his arms and legs and scars on his wrist from being tied up with a rope for too long. The man picked up a towel from the shelf and wiped the sweat from his face and hands. The boy opened his eyes. For a brief moment, his eyes met mine as, all I, was, as I was all crouched under the desk. The boy lay seemingly dead under the man's peering eyes. The boy's eyes were speaking to me. It was dark and he was far away, but I knew. There is no way I could not know. He was asking for help. Help me, save me, help me run away. And shortly after that, the little boy in there, he actually grabs like a box cutter and like hits the kidnapper, but the kidnapper still like prevents him from escaping. But Jimin was able to escape. And then shortly after he escaped, he passed out. And that's probably when he had his first seizure. And now he just consi was consistently has them. So yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit dark, <laughs> but okay. So this is the, I think the most important day in the BU. Like if you have to remember a day, it's gonna be April 11th. And so 
After, I don't know if it was a few years, but on April 11th, Jin returns back from America and he comes to Korea. And that day, he drives past the high school and he sees Jungkook, but he doesn't really do anything. He's like, cool, that's my friend, whatever, I recognize him. And then he also stops by the gas station, he sees Namjoon, he doesn't think anything of it. Cool, that's Namjoon, I'm not going to talk to him. And later, I think it's May 22nd. So a few months, or I guess like a month goes by, and it's May 22nd. And he's like, oh, I wonder what would happen if I did talk to him, if I did talk to Namjoon. And so then he ends up going back to the gas station, and he's not there. And so he asks a coworker, hey, where's my boy Namjoon? And he's like, oh, he's in jail. <laughs> he got in a fight with a customer on April 11th, and now he's in jail. And so then Jin goes to the jail, and then he ends up talking to Namjoon, and he's like, yeah, that day I just got in a fight with a customer. And so he's like, okay, well, if you're in here, where is the other five boys? And so then Jun tells him, he tells him that Jungkook and Yoongi are both dead. And he also tells him that J-Hope and Jimin are in the hospital. And so this is a really good, great news to hear after a while if you're like, everyone I was friends with is suddenly dead or in the hospital or in jail. <laughs> and so he, as he leaves the jail cell, he's like, huh, I wonder what's up with, you know, Tay because it's the only one missing. And Tay is getting arrested because he just killed his father. <laughs> so here's all his friends that he knew in high school and they're just, they're arrested in jail, dead and it's, it's not a fun time. And so he kind of ponders over this. He's like, why, what happened? Like, did I, did he do something? Because he left and all of a sudden all these bad things are happening. And so he kind of carries his guilt with him. So he decides to go back to the beach to kind of reminisce about that really fun time. And so he goes and he asks himself like, what, what happened? But as he was on the beach, I think this is the most iconic quote of the whole thing. There's a cat that shows up. And it says, if you could turn back time, do you believe you could straighten out the errors and mistakes and save everyone? Let me tell you, I screamed when I read this because <laughs> before this, we had no confirmation what Jin, like, who is Jin? Because there's a lot of theories back in the day, like, oh, he's dead, everyone else is alive, he's just imagining things. Or the other way around, we didn't actually know. And this confirmed that, okay, Jin can time travel of some sort. And so after that meeting with the cat, he wakes up and it's April 11th and he doesn't really know what happened. He's like, that's a really weird dream I had where all my friends just died, I guess. <laughs> and so he thinks it's all a dream. And so he kind of repeats the same things he did on April 11th. So he drives past the high school, he drives past the gas station. He doesn't talk to anyone because in his head, he's like, oh, well, nothing happened. And so as he drives past the gas station, he's driving past the road, and Jungkook falls on top of his car. Ooh. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, he's just driving by, and Jungkook jumps off a building and lands on top of his car. And at this point, there's like an image of like glass shattering and so as the glass shatters, he hears the cat's voice. And the cat's voice tells him, like, oh, to remember, like, the time loop, you have to do this. And, like, just remember glass shattering. And so he realizes he now has this power to just, tr like, un redo stuff and kind of create alternate timelines of what's happening. And he can possibly save all his friends. And so he kind of starts this journey of trying to save everyone by himself. <laughs> And to, to start, he talks to Namjoon this time when he passes through the gas station. Because what happened is there's this really rude customer who would like throw the money outside his car window and it would like land on the floor. And then Namjoon would be like, he, I mean, you would feel disrespected if someone did that to you. So then he would fight the customer and then he would go to jail. So to prevent this, Jin would just try to interfere. And there's a lot of different ways he did this and I'll talk about in a little bit what he did to actually solve it. So he would talk to him 
And then he would try to go save Jungkook from jumping off the building. And he would also, the challenge with Yoongi is he had like five different, I think three different buildings he would like to set on fire, just depending on the timeline, whatever he felt like, I guess. And so he would have to go through like each building and try to see where he was going to start it. But often he couldn't really find the building until it was in flames, obviously. And I think there was one timeline where like Yoongi got really mad when he like woke up because he's like, why am I not dead? He really wanted to die. And he was just really angry for being alive. But Jin tried his best. And so then he would try, or they would kind of gather together and help Jimin and, Jung and J-Hope escape from the hospital. And they finally were able to do that. And so it's like, oh, cool, we got these four boys, but there's a fifth. <laughs> and this fifth one, they forgot about. But so Tay would usually kill his dad. And so this time Jin's like, oh, crap, I forgot about him. So he runs and he breaks into the room and Tay ends up stabbing Jin. And then Jin dies. For, for now, they restart the timeline, whatever he lives. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> Yeah, so after this, he's like, okay, well, I can't really do this alone because it's a lot to do alone if you're trying to save this many people from dying. And he saw that after he forgot to save Tay. So he realizes, I can't do this alone. Let me try to get them to help each other without them actually knowing that they're helping each other. And so he would still help Namjoon because, so that he doesn't go to jail. But then after that, Yoongi would actually call Jungkook right before he jumped off the building. And so he's like, okay, I'm going to let that happen. And then he would put like a Polaroid picture in front of like the building that was going to set on fire. That way Jungkook, Jungkook could go looking for Yoongi, see this, and be like, this is a bit weird. And then I guess see the flames and then go in and save him somehow. <laughs> I don't really know how. But yeah, so he would go and save Yoongi. And so that's three boys taken care of. Okay, and so this is Jungkook on April 11th, I believe. Maybe. Yeah, so this is April 11th. And this is kind of what happens, like this is him on the building about to jump off. So. I closed my eyes and saw a vivid image of my stepfather clearing his, fro his throat. My stepbrother giggled. My stepfather's relatives turned their eyes away or continued their idle talk. They acted as if I wasn't there, as if my existence meant nothing. Mom was flustered. I stirred up dust as I picked, up, I picked myself off the ground and coughed. The pit in my stomach hurt like I'd been stabbed with a knife. It was deserted, unfinished building where construction had been halted. I tight-roped walked along the guardrail and stalled on the rooftop with my arms spread out. I stretched my foot out into the void and the darkness began to permeate through my toes. The colorful nights, nightscape of the city unfolded down below me. Neon signs, honking cars, and the smell of dust were all jumbled together in the darkness in the swirling torrent. I felt dizzy and staggered. As I spread my arms even wider to keep my balance, a thought came to me. Just one more step forward, that's all it'll take to end this. I leaned over towards the dark void. The darkness that seeped into my toes sprang up at me as if I, it gobbled my entire body up. I closed my eyes and the disorderly city, the noise and the fear all disappeared. I held my breath and I slowly leaned over again. I cleared my head. I didn't think of anyone. I didn't want to leave anything in my head. I didn't want to remember anything. This was the end. My phone rang. I came back to myself as if I had wakened from a long dream. All my senses instantly returned to normal. I took out my phone. It was Yoongi. So that's how he got saved. It's really cool. And so now they got to save the rest of them. <laughs> and so Jin, to save Jimin, he would kind of, well, not to save Jimin, but to save J-Hope, he would have to use Jimin. And so he kind of rerouted the way that Jimin would walk through the hospital. And he would like somehow catch J-Hope because J-Hope thought he saw his mother walking by. And so he would trip on the stairs and Jimin just happened to be there and would catch him and prevent him from staying in the hospital. And then they would all help Jimin escape again, which seemed to work out. 
And so now all he has to do is really save Tay, and then they're somehow all live. And so to do this, he actually asked Hobie, he's like, hey, why don't we go to the beach? And they're like, okay, cool. It's like, okay, well, we have everyone but Tay, so go ask him. And he would be able to prevent him from killing his father. And so we get to this point, it is now May 22nd, and no one is dead. We're arrested <laughs> for once. And so now it's happily ever after for most people. So it's, they're on the beach and everything seems good because they're all alive. They somehow, they connected again after this falling out and everything seems good. But Tay is a bit suspicious of Jin. And that's because he has his dreams where he would see previous timelines. And so he sees Jin in these timelines and he's like, what is he doing to us? Are these like real? Like, why would I be dreaming of these? And so he's a bit suspicious of this. And so he ends up confronting them at the end of this beach day. And so he confronts Jin and they end up getting in a fight because Jin obviously doesn't want to tell his friends. Because imagine if someone just came up to you and was like, yeah, I'm just trying to save you from dying. You're going to die like in a month. It's a bit hard to handle that information. And just, it's a bit weird to be like, yeah, I can kind of travel in time, but also create things. And I, that's a weird power to have. That's not normal. And so that night, they just kind of go their separate ways. But that night, Jungkook gets hit by a car. <laughs> Him in these cars, it's... <laughs> so he gets hit by that car that night at the beach. Um, and... Yeah, so he goes to the hospital, and none of the boys know that Jungkook gets hit by a car for a while. They only figure it out um, once J-Hope realizes it, because he works at like a burger place, and the customer's like, oh, did you hear about Jungkook getting hit by a car? Okay. And so he kind of tells all the other boys. <laughs> he tells all the other boys, he's like, oh, our friend is in the hospital. And so they all kind of visit him. The, the only two that don't visit him are Yoongi, just because he feels guilty, because he's kind of connected with him the most. And then Tay doesn't visit because Jin was in the hospital room when he was there. And he's like, I don't like Jin. <laughs> I don't trust him. He's up to something. And so this is when the Highlight Reels era starts, because Jungkook's in the hospital. And uh, like the Reels, I would say they're very, they have all the information. You really need to know. Like if you watch these, you're, it makes sense. I know a lot of people like to, or when they first came out, people put a lot of meaning behind like the girls. And they're like, oh, the girls are actually the boys, like personalities or another one of the boys, like pairings and all this. And I just think of them as girls. <laughs> Cause in the notes, they just kind of seem like girls. And they're also mentioned. And everything from this point is pretty much, I would say most of it's like music video stuff. And it's in the notes one and we'll just talk a bit more. And then after that, we don't really have a lot of like visual representation of what's happening, but for this we do. And so, yeah, I think it's pretty straightforward. Like they meet girls, no one's dying, no one's murdering. Everything seems kind of good. Uh, Jungkook's still in the hospital for a bit. Uh, Jimin, after he gets out of the hospital, he starts dancing with Hobie and he kind of finds passion. But one day he was practicing with one of the girls this one, <laughs> um, and they collide. And I think part of his trauma is also just related to seeing blood. So he saw the blood and he kind of freaked out and he just left to go wash it off. And he forgets about this girl who she, I think she passes out after getting hit. And so Hobie finds, the, or finds her and he asks to carry her. And this is bad for him because he ends up like twisting or hurting his ankle and then he can't dance. <sighs> which is terrifying. <laughs> and so with Hobie not being able to dance, he kind of just becomes, he, he becomes really like depressed and stuff. And so he just decides to ghost everyone, just leave town and join like a circus thingy. <laughs> but he, he wasn't dancing of course, but he's just watching them. And he's like, oh, I've never been out of town. He's never really explored because I think he's just afraid of like leaving a home because he was abandoned. Um, but yeah, so one day, I think um, 
So he gets really angry at Yoongi specifically because he's like, why didn't you visit Jungkook in the hospital? Like, you're his friend. Why aren't you there for him? And so Yoongi wants, like, kind of, like, imagine J-Hope yelling at you. Like, you would take that to heart. <laughs> if you did something wrong, then you're wrong. <laughs> and so he's like, oh, I really messed up then. And so it's actually really cute. He ends up writing a song called Hope, and he sends it to J-Hope, and then he comes back to town. And so this whole time, Jin, he finds a diary, and this is the diary of the girl that he meets, and the diary is actually a bucket list of all the things she wants to do, which is really cute. And so Jin is just, he finds a diary, and he starts, like, asking her on these dates of, like, the perfect dates, because he has a bucket list. And he does not tell her that, oh, hey, I have your diary. So he just kind of, <laughs> a bit creepy. <laughs> But she's just like, wow, this is the most perfect dude I've ever met. He knows exactly what I want. And so one of her wishes is actually smeraldo flowers, which the smeraldo flower doesn't actually exist. But it kind of looks like the flowers on the pens back there. So that's what they are. They're smeraldo flowers. Um, it's just something that's solely exclusive to like the BU. And so in this time, Jin's with his girl. Jungkook's in the hospital whatever and there's like a random thing like once Jungkook gets out of the hospital him and Tay try to find like Tay's mom and they just go like on a side quest but they don't find her but once Yoongi sends Hobie that song like Hobie comes back and they actually start messaging in the group chat and they actually start like reconnecting they're like hey long time to see <laughs> and they decide okay we're gonna make plans for August 31st and this is like this giant firework festival. And so they're like, okay, let's meet up there. So this is a smeralda flower. It's imaginary, it doesn't exist, sadly. But that's the day. So Jin, he told the others they were gonna have a party in Namjoon's like container house. But he's like, okay, I have like a quick appointment first and then I'll meet you guys there. And so that day he gets the flowers and then he notices there's no card on there. And so he calls up the like delivery guy. He's like, hey, there's no card on here. And so the car's like, okay, let me just U-turn. And he U-turns into Jin's girl, and then she dies. <laughs> I just, I don't think cars should exist in this universe. It would prevent so many things. So with this, Jin's like, oh, someone dying? That means I must restart the timeline. So he restarts the timeline, and it's April 11th again. <laughs> So, yeah, it's not a good coping mechanism. <laughs> and so this is a note just from like the days leading up to it where they're planning to all meet together to watch the fireworks. And so this is from Tay's perspective. And so it was Hosak's idea to get together to see the fireworks. After his return, our group chat started buzzing and humming again. We told him how we missed him in a reapproachful and welcoming manner. And Hosek responded playfully that we should have realized the importance of his existence earlier. <laughs> Make sure to come for the fireworks. We all said yes. Namjoon would arrive after his shift for his part-time job. And Sokjun also promised to come, however late, after his appointment. I was reminded of my dream when I saw the message. A woman getting killed in an accident with Sokjun watching her. That dream ended with fireworks. White petals of flame pour down the night sky. So, obviously, Tay has had a dream where the girl gets hit so he already kind of knew it was happening but for him it's just a dream but yeah they all decide to get together for fireworks and that's just count, 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 kind of how it ends <laughs> so they just don't Jin ends up he goes through a few different timelines some of them were like the girl just kind of he starts getting frustrated with her because he's like I'm the perfect guy but things weren't working out. <laughs> and so in one of the like later timelines, he just ends up saying, I've had your diary this whole time. Sorry. And they just kind of break it off. And this is actually the map of the soul era now. So this from this point onwards, like there's not a lot of visual stuff because just they haven't really covered it. Most of the like this information is from the notes too, or from the game, like I think it's a BTS universe storyline game. And so, yeah, there's not much of what actually is happening here. 
But notes one does end with June dying again in a fire. <laughs> so he dies in his container home. Um, and it was actually set on fire because of Jin's dad. This is where it starts getting like, what? <laughs> but so Jin's dad has this redevelopment plan and it involves where Jun was living. And so Jin, you know, he's like, friend die, I must go help. And so he tries to help Jun, but he can't. So then the loop restarts, because that's what he does when he can't save them. And so, and he also goes and seeks the cat, because he's like, something's not working out, they keep dying. Um, <laughs> and so I'll just read the end of notes one, kind of what happened to his trailer home. And so this is also the perspective from Tay's perspective, because this is another dream to him, seeing June die. And so, in my dream, this area was enveloped in flames. The entire scene seemed to shiver and wave. Maybe it was because of the heat, or maybe it was because I was dreaming. Someone screamed, some kind of crashing sound, the sound of crying, and the sound of something crumbling all came together and flooded in my mind. The images as shimmered in the far distance suddenly drew near at full speed. I felt nauseous and I shut my eyes, but it was a dream. I couldn't get rid of them by shutting my eyes. My gaze, first blocked by flames, pushed through people standing with their backs to me the next minute, and then stopped suddenly. One, two, three, four. The fourth container was Namjoon's. The door had fallen off. There was bloodstains. Flames spurged inside. People stepped aside one after another. The floor came into view. Namjoon was laying there. Someone blurted out, he's dead. So, he's, Tay dreamt about this, but obviously the loop restarted because Jin's He's like, someone died. This isn't good. <laughs> and so this is kind of the redevelopment plan that caused the fire. And it was just the per people who created it was part of like Jin's dad's company. So it was just like, oh, we're just going to demolish like this area. And Namjoon's container just happened to be there. But Jin seeks the cat once again. And yeah, he's like, what's not working? And so with the cat, the cat's like, okay, one more thing. So there's something called the map of the soul. And if you find it, well, then it might help him with like his problems, I guess. But there is a price if you do find it. And so Jin's like, I don't care about this price. I just want my friends to finally live for once. And so he's like, okay, I'll do anything to help them. And so Tay's dreams are still happening. And I really like this because Tay is like explaining what happened in his dreams and Jin's like, how do you know this? Because <laughs> that would be a bit weird because <laughs> he's like, I'm the only one. So Tay still thinks that Jin's hiding something from him because he's like, obviously, if you're getting like triggered from these dreams that I'm just explaining to you as dreams and you get offended, then something is true. And so Jin kind of tells them in a way and he kind of has to because Tay sees this map where it kind of like links like, okay, Yoongi has three buildings that he's going to set fire to. Jungkook, this construction site, he'll jump off and then Namjoon gas station. So he sees this, like Tay sees this in Jin's house and he's like, well, obviously something's going on. You have this like map of us. That's a bit weird. And so Jin kind of... He kind of helps in a, well, he tries to like just brush it off. He's like, oh, it's just nothing. Just keeping track of where you are, I guess. <laughs> but so, yeah, May, it's May 22nd when this happens. So they're all saved at this point. And then Tay's just like, what is this? And so he tries to explain it in a way that's not like, oh, I have magical powers. It's more just like, oh, I'm just trying to help you guys. <laughs> and so they... It, Tay ends up also getting the help from Namjoon, and so those two kind of just like help make sure no one dies. Um, but in the end, Jungkook still gets hit by a car. <laughs> this is like the fifth time. <laughs> There's so many photos of him getting hit by a car, it's insane. But, so he still gets hit by a car that day. Um, but this time when he wakes up, he's kind of suspicious of Jin. And that's because Jin does not visit him in the hospital this time because he's too busy trying to find the map of the soul. And so he just doesn't visit Jungkook. And he's like, why aren't you visiting me if you're my friend? 
And so at this point, Jungkook, he remembers seeing a truck very similar to Jin's truck. So in his head, he's like, did Jin hit me with a car? <laughs> and so I want to ask a question. So raise your hand if you think Jin hit him with a car. Just, anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Yeah, so I think it's, let me just say, it's not clear. There is no point in the story where Jin says, oh, I hit Jungkook with a car for fun. Because <laughs> at this point, Jin is doing everything he can to save like his friends. He's doing all this. He's trying to, he's literally sacrificing himself. And he's just redoing all this by himself to try to save them. So it's just, that'd be a bit weird to hit him. But there is a note that is from Jin's perspective of what happened that night. So, so this is May 22nd, so the day they all kind of went to the beach and then afterwards Jungkook still gets hit by a car. Um, so, this is that day I think Jin and Tae still kind of get in a fight because he didn't explain to him, oh I have magical powers. And so, <laughs> But one thing that happens in, since he like, went to the cat for advice is he starts getting these headaches, like really, really bad, like migraines. And so this is from him. So when I couldn't see the beach anymore, I took my foot off the accelerator. The sun had set long ago. The road was empty and dark. The headache would not go away, neither would the sense of, of guilt. It wasn't like anyone, it wasn't like me to get all worked up like this and I didn't know how to calm down. I looked in the rearview mirror and was reminded of Tay's face. Are you gonna forget me soon? Jimin too, and Jungkook, and Namjoon. Jungkook's voice was also ringing in my head. Let's take a picture here. The countless pictures I'd taken there at the beach flipped through my head, which felt like it would explode. I opened my eyes at the loud honking sound and saw the headlights right in front of me. As a reflex, I turned the wheel. The tires skidded against the asphalt and shook the whole car. I stepped on the brake, but it took a while for the car to halt. The car crashed into the opposite guardrail and finally stopped. I heard a scraping sound, but I didn't think it was a serious accident. I opened the car door and stepped out. And so, from this point, it didn't seem like he hit a person. It seemed like he just got a headache, kind of blacked out for a minute, and just hit the side of like a guardrail. But we don't, Maybe, maybe in this one timeline, he just accidentally hits him and then just restarts it. And it's like, nothing happened. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so at this point, it's past May 22nd. Jungkook's in the hospital, but the rest of them are alive and well. And so he tries to, he tries to ask around about the map of the soul. And he ends up going to the hospital because there's this crazy guy who's like in the psych ward that just like walks around just saying like map of the soul, map of the soul. And so he's in the hospital because they think he's crazy. And Jimin was in the hospital and he kind of overhears. And so then he confronts Jin. He's like, what is the map of the soul? And so then the boys just end up making a group chat. But this group chat is without Jungkook because they kind of want him to focus on his recovery. He's in the hospital, he got hit by a car. And so they just, they just kind of exclude him. And so at this point, Tay and Amjoon are still like working. They're trying to prevent the fire from happening in Namjoon's house. And so they're like, okay, let's just get rid of this redevelopment plan. And so then they like sneak into, I think, Jin's dad's office and they try to find the redevelopment plan. And when they do, they leak it to the media and the media is like, this is all illegal, because it was illegal. And Jin actually gets really mad at them. He's like, why would you do this to my dad? Because what he thinks is his dad's like, this is a good thing. But even if it would involve his friend dying, and that's just because he kind of takes like a mood, like his mood just kind of changes with all these headaches. And at this point, he's just frustrated because he's been through the timeline so many times, people keep dying. Just nothing is working out for like the way he thought it would. So he's just kind of, he's not really Jin. <laughs> but so at this point, they leak the development plans. That way the fire won't set. But they also realize that Jin's dad used to, because he went to the same high school as them. 
And so him and his friend's group would actually hang out in the same storage room that they all met, which is cool. So they decide, okay, let's just go look at the storage room. It's been a while. And Tay and Jin start fighting again. They, they fight a lot. But as they're fighting, they kind of like push each other and this wall breaks down in the storage room. And behind the wall, there's actually a cabinet. And so in this cabinet, there's actually a diary of that was written from Jin's dad. And so in this diary, it says, everything started from here. And in the diary, it actually talks about how Jin's father would go through time like loops and timelines. So it turns out him, like his dad actually had the same like power as him, which is really weird, but <laughs> good for him. <laughs> and his dad originally made a deal like with the cat because his friend went missing. And so his friend group consists of the missing friend, the dad, the principal of the high school, and then the crazy dude in the hospital that would just say, map of the soul, map of the soul. And so, yeah, so he, Jin just realizes like, oh wait, my dad went through the same thing that I did? That's a bit weird. And as he kind of reads through this diary, he realizes like his dad never successfully was able to save his friend. And so, and then Jin starts to wonder like, wait, why am I doing this for anyways? Whether he's thinking like, oh, if I'm not gonna be able to save them, why am I doing this? Or just like, he starts thinking like, wait, what? what has happened? And it's mainly because there was a time like Tay and Jin started fighting in that storage room before they broke down the wall because Tay was telling him about all the happy days at the beach and Jin's like, this has never happened. Why are you gaslighting me? Like, we never went to the beach, we never did this. And so at this point, he realizes that he's losing his memories as the price for searching for the map of the soul. So he's not even remembering, like, why is he trying to save his friends? Like, are these even my friends? Like, what did we even go through together? And so he realizes this is a price. And so his headache that he would get was actually him trying to, like, remember the happy times. And he would get it whenever he tried to remember. And so to try to overcome this, he would go through his photos. And he's like, okay, well, this is, like, physical, like, data that this actually happened. Let me try to remember and his headache would just get worse and worse and worse until he got his memories back. So this is a note from when Jin got his memory back and just kind of what the map of the soul is. So, okay, so he opens up like his dad's diary and it's like, so, and then he realizes like missing pages and so he goes and finds them. And so the missing pages were in an envelope in the middle of the bookshelf. The pages were disappointing. The chapter was titled The Map of the Soul, but there was nothing in it about what the title meant. All the chapter had was a couple of episodes from my dad's high school days, but I saw a passage. So this is like the perspective of, from his dad's notebook. It says, when I thought about my high school days, I realized the map I was looking for wasn't a real map with roads and dead ends, directions and scales. It was just another name for the life I have lived, the countless hours I have lived since then, and the choices I have made. It'd be the trajectory of all my failures, successes, mistakes, and blunders. But I failed to find the map. In retrospect, I realized I had landed on the right path because of my failures. Dad was looking for the map. Given the chapter title, it was a map of the soul he was looking for. And he said it had been the trajectory of the failures, successes, mistakes, and blunders of a person. Then what would be my trajectory? What contained the memories of the days I had lived? Was that what I should be looking for? I remember then what Tay had told me. You have lost your memories. I ran back to the room. I pulled out a box from under the desk and found a couple of photo books and envelopes with Polaroid pictures. And so that's, he just kind of goes through all of this thing. So I'm just going to skip a little bit forward. And so he's looking at the Polaroids. So did this all really happen? When I tried to remember, the headache came back. I didn't know, but I closed my eyes tight, and the memories I was about to bring back instantly dissipated. I remember this had repeated over and over again. When I tried to remember, the headache came back. I stood up and looked down at the pile of pictures. I gritted my teeth and focused, fighting against the pain. I, I tried to remember. 
Only when I am able to overcome this pain will I be able to find the trajectory of my life and arrive at the map of the soul. And so he kind of realizes like the map of the soul isn't a physical thing. It's more just like how you're going to live your life. And so at the, so the fire still happens because the redevelopment or the redevelopment plan failed. But because it was leaked, there's a lot of bad like media towards Jin's dad and Jin's uncle, who also worked in the same company. And so Jin's uncle actually just ends up lighting fire to the containers anyways. But this time, Namjoon doesn't die. (laughs) So (laughs) he doesn't die. And so at this point, after reading his dad's diary and after just kind of realizing what he's become for like losing his memories, he decides to tell all the boys about what he's going through. And he actually tells them like, oh, I've been going through these time loops. But he tells everyone except for Jungkook. And so he realizes he can't really do this alone. And just this whole like love yourself thing, like, oh, I should love myself for my failures. I shouldn't be like, this didn't work out. Let me just restart time. And so he kind of just, he realizes that things don't have to work out all the time. And Jungkook, they were like, they, I mean, if you like know your friends are talking about like talking with other people about you, you kind of know. So he would see them all gather together. And he's like, why are they just leaving me out of this? And so his conclusion is, they all know that Jin hit me with a car and they're trying to protect him. And so they are, he just thinks that everyone is against him. They're like, oh, they'd rather protect Jin than me. Like, I'm the victim, I'm in the hospital. And so he just gets really, really angry about this. And I'm going to read a note about what, like, he gets to the point where he's like, I just want to kill them. Which is weird to be like, Jungkook wants to kill his friends. But yeah, and so this is actually the end of Notes 2. But Notes 2 actually ends with another note from Jungkook, which is, it's really mysterious because the date is like X'd out. The year is X'd out. All we know is Jungkook. And it's very similar to another note. But it's just kind of, I don't know, it's a bit creepy. So first I'm going to read kind of what was going through his head when he's like, I want to kill these guys. (laughs) which is it's a bit weird. Okay, so he is at this, like, um, what are they called? Like a PC room. So he's just playing games. So, so kill him, kill him. Why aren't you killing him? I snapped out of it, hearing someone yelling. The monitor had a shooting game on it. From the headset, someone on my team was yelling because an enemy had showed up. Shoot, shoot now. I grabbed the mouse and started shooting at the enemy like crazy. The character was knocked down dead like an inflatable toy with its air pumped out. With my mouse, I roamed the game map. The railway ran in the middle of it. There was containers along the rail- railway, just like the container village. Where is he? Kill him. And kill that guy too. Hurry up. I pressed the keyboard to pick up a different weapon, a machine gun. When I did, an enemy with a black bandana appeared at a distance. As I was aiming for him, I felt like I knew the guy, and I got him with one shot. And I aimed and I shot the other enemies. Park Jimin, Jungle Suck. I had no idea why their names dropped out of my mouth. I sneered. Come to think of it, those guys on the screen looked like them. No, those guys were them. I shot down one enemy, one friend at a time. As soon as I saw Namjoon crawling out of his container, I shot him down. And I fired at Tang's head as he was running along the railway. I glanced down at him without any feelings. But someone from a distance shot me in the shoulder. When I changed the view with my mouse, I saw Sokjin with a gun. Immediately, I was boiled up with hostility. I hid behind a wooden crate. From the headset, I heard a team member say, Take him down. I cut him off. No, I'll do it. I stood up and I aimed at Sokjin. He kneeled over to the right. Yoongi ran out behind him and ran towards me. I had no bullets left. Stone face, Yoongi pulled the trigger. The trigger. I jumped to the side but got hit twice. My life gauge took a serious dip and the monitor changed to red. I threw away the machine gun and pulled over the revolver and killed Yungi with one shot to the head. He fell limp and dead on the ground. Wind showed up on the monitor. The teammates roared on the headset and said, Fantastic, you're really good. So, Jungkook seriously hates these guys. <laughs> to the point where he's playing a video game and he's like imagining the people he's like killing. These video game characters are his friends. Which is a bit concerning. <laughs> 
But he's just thinking all this because he's like, oh, they're protecting him. He hit me with a car. And he's convinced that they did. And so this is kind of the end. This is how Notes 2 ends. And so, like I said, it's just kind of, it's at the end and it doesn't really make sense because it's just placed in here. But I'll try to explain what I think it means in a bit. So I opened my eyes. It was dark everywhere. As if I was floating in an empty space with everything gone, my fingertips felt strange. So I looked at them. Something sticky and slippery slipped through my fingertips. I peered into where I had fallen. Nothing, just darkness. Where am I? What's going on? I asked myself. But instead of an answer, laughter escaped my lips. The chuckling sound hovered over me like a sticky mass of liquid. The left upper space slowly became bright. I tried turning my head, but I, didn't really, I couldn't really move my body. I didn't feel comfortable. It didn't hurt anywhere or feel tiring. I just couldn't move well, as if I was floating in sticky air. The faint lights became stronger as they came to me, and in one moment they got to my fingertips. Pain flooded over me. I felt burned or frozen, as if I'd been burned by scorching ice. There was more rays of light coming down on me. It became too bright. I curled up. I tightened my legs and arms. I struggled to step back. I tried to run away. The lights invaded through my fingertips, my arms and shoulders, and my ears and cheeks. I screamed, but my screams twisted into liquid mass and floated around me. I tried twisting my body as hard as I could. If it will be more painful to live than to die, do you still want to live? I remember it from somewhere. In the next is instant, my vision turned upside down. My body flipped and so did my surroundings. For a while, I couldn't see a thing. My eyes felt as if grains of sand were in them, and I saw something hazy in the distance. Is it a light? No, it was much bigger, brighter, and wispy. Floating and motionless, it looked down on me. After staring down on me for a long time, it began to take on a definitive shape. It was the moon. I shifted my eyes to look around. I began to see things. I was floating in space. There was a big hole below me, a huge bottomless gaping hole. I looked up again. I saw the moon at the faraway distance. I was floating somewhere between the moon and the hole, and suddenly I had a thought. That is not the moon, that's a big hole in the sky. Something was about to begin. Maybe I had been waiting for that. I tried to remember starting when I had been waiting, but I couldn't remember anything. And that's how the books end. And that's pretty much just how the storyline ends up to here is with Jungkook somehow like suspended in this black abyss and with the intention of not really liking his friends anymore. So this is just a quick summary of just the boys and kind of their journey. So Jin, before he would lose all his friends and he couldn't save them, but now he knows he can't really fix every mistake and he kind of learns to love himself. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, Yoongi, so before he tried to kill himself by lighting himself on fire, but now he realizes, oh, like I can find joy in composing and writing music. Okay, Jungle Suck. So before he would lose his balance really easily and he would get injured and go to the hospital, but now he participates in dance groups and he explores and he actually likes to leave town. Kim Nam Joon, before he was in jail, and he kind of felt trapped by his workload. Um, but now he's not in jail, and he kind of helps Jin in this process of getting his memories. Okay, Park Jimin, before he... <laughs> that'd have been fun here. Before he was in the hospital, and he's kind of held back because of his like, response and his trauma from like blood and rain. And now he's out of the hospital, and he kind of decides, hey, I like to dance too. Okay, Kim Tae-hyung. So before he tries to kill his dad, he gets arrested, he kills Jin a few times, he fights with him a lot. But now he wants to be someone that his father never was. He wants to protect his family, and he also kind of helps Jin because he's like, oh, hey, I saw this in my dreams, maybe this is helpful to you. Jun Jun Cook, before he would jump off buildings. <laughs> okay, now he's not dead, but he kind of hates the boys. I had fun with this. Okay. <laughs> so what now? I think is a real question. So this is stuff I didn't cover, and I think we still have time for questions, so I can cover some of it if you want. But what I didn't really cover was Hobie's backstory and kind of like his mom left him, and there are times 
in like the, I think it was the mama film where it says he has like Munchausen's, so he's not actually sick. He might just be pretending to be sick for the attention he never got. Um, and yeah, I didn't really cover how he's sick or how he really ends up in hospitals. I also didn't cover like every single timeline because it happens so many times and like all the different attempts because of, you know, the butterfly effect where just like one thing went wrong and then everything else gets wrong. Um, I didn't really cover Jin's, like his friend group too much, but I did say it consists of like the principal, the boy who went missing, and then the guy in the hospital and Jin's dad. Um, I didn't cover random side quests. Like one of my favorite side quests, if I can catch up on my notes, <laughs> is actually it happens with, well, I don't know if it's my favorite, it's kind of sad, but <laughs> it's with Namjoon. So he goes and he works in a different city as like a delivery boy, but one day he wrecks his scooter and it wasn't broken though. And so then his friend who also works at the place decides like, well, the scooter is good enough for me to ride, but it was like really snowy that day. And with this broken scooter, his friend ends up dying because the scooter crashes. And it just kind of, I think it just affects, it affects him. Because <laughs> if your friend dies, you're like, wait, I broke that scooter, and then he ends up dying because the scooter was broken. You kind of feel bad. But that's just one of the things that happened. And the notes really gets into, like, random things. Not all of them are sad. Some of them are happy. It's just, like, moments between them. Um, and there's also one of the timelines that was covered in the webtoon where they actually like, they all die in like a car accident together. Woo, more cars. <laughs> so, yeah, so that happens a few times. Um, <laughs> I didn't really get into like the pairings that you commonly see, like in the I Need You music video or the run, where like Yoongi and Jungkook and like Tae and Nam Joon, so I didn't really cover the way they interact because in like the books and all the rest of the content, I think all of them interact with each other at least once. So it's just like constant interaction. Some of them are a bit more important than others, but yeah. And then the last thing I didn't really cover was kind of how like the wings and the Damien and the Om like the Omalas kind of fit in. And that's, they're like separate stories that get tied into the VU, but they're not, it doesn't deal with the BU characters. So like the wings, it kind of deals with like temptation, but it also deals with the BU if you like physically, like if you watch the, all the visuals and the music videos. So it's just, it's kind of intertwined. And so this is kind of my theory on where we are at and what could happen next. So we know Jungkook kind of hates the boys. And so I feel like we are kind of at the fake love music video where you see Jungkook kind of watching from like above and from the side, and he, he doesn't look very happy. <laughs> but so I think, I personally think that Jungkook has made a deal with a cat in some way to try to obtain information whether or not Jin actually hit him with a car. And so I think that last note, when it shows someone speaking, like if it's more painful to live than to die, would you still want to live? So I think it's the cat speaking to him and that he now has some sort of power. We don't really know what. And so, yeah, I think right now the focus is not on Jin anymore because he realizes he can just love himself, deal with his problems, but Jungkook, he needs some help. So I think if, continuing on, I think it's gonna be more towards Jungkook. And so my theory is of what can continue because right now we're gonna have like a group music break for the next few years. I think they can still do things like come out with another book because that's just it's a book or another webtoon and more like other content that the boys don't have to directly be involved in to continue and there's actually an upcoming drama that's called it's called youth but it was announced I think earlier this year last year that they were gonna film this and this is basically gonna be the BU but they just had to change the names because legal reasons <laughs> But so they're basically, <laughs> they're, it's, I think it is, it's like a high project, but it is, it will be like the BU universe. And last I heard a few months ago is they did film, like finish filming and they were gonna release it this year. I still don't know if they will, 
but supposedly I think it might just cover like the boys while they were in school and before they fell apart. I don't think it's going to really cover Jin's timelines and stuff because I think that's going to be a bit harder to cover in dramas. And in the end, this universe is forever. Like I think the way they created this is like there's endless possibilities of what can happen and how they can take this. And I know it's going to be like probably on a bit of a hold for now, but I think they can still release content. And now they have like a perfect open opportunity with Jin, like Jin is accepting himself, but Jungkook isn't. So I think there's a good place that they can keep continuing. Um, I don't know if anyone will continue it with their solo stuff, but I think it'd be cool just to see like any of their books or webtoons. And so these are the additional resources I have linked. At the end of this, I have like a QR code and a link if you want to take a picture of that so you can access this specific page. So I linked the official webtoon. It used to be free. Now I think you get one free chapter a day if you don't have like coins. And so you can go through that, but it's actually, it's really cool. I like it. Um, Map of the BU. Is it okay if I like click? Click my links. <laughs> Okay, so Map of the BU is a really cool website. I want to see if it works. Where it's just kind of, it'll kind of show you like an outline of the city. Because I know at this point, it's kind of hard to like say, oh, this is where this is in relation to this. So like for this, it says like, this is here and this is here. And you can kind of, it'll take you to places and it'll kind of take you to notes of where the places are. Okay, and then... The BU guide is something similar where it kind of has like an entire story, like timeline. Let's see if it'll work. But it shows. So this is kind of, these are all the notes like in a timeline order. So if you want to, it's a bit overwhelming, but it has things by like members. It has, it has a lot of stuff. <laughs> And it kind of gives you like, uh, you can kind of see. These are fan made, which is really cool. <laughs> um, and then I also linked, I linked the notes one and the notes two. These are just PDF versions from when I checked, when I first, when I started making the PowerPoint, both the notes one and two were available on Weverse. Now only the notes two are available. Uh, the notes one is available in Spanish but they are still available to buy. I bought mine when they first came out and they're just cool. If you're, I'm a physical, like I need a physical book to read, but they're, they do have like scans of the book if you want to read them. And then album notes, if you've ever bought an album, you get like a little one of these things and it has, these are, the notes in here and the notes in here are different. They're somewhat, they like overlap some content but the notes, like the physical books, have a lot more than just these. And these aren't translated. But this is like, it has all of the notes that have been in albums. So, like I know each album has a different one. Are they translated? Yes, they are translated on here, which is good. <laughs> and so these, these are a bit different from the ones in the books. Yeah, because for like this one, this is the, this is Map of the Soul Persona. And each version has a different notes. So that's like four notes just for one album. And it just, there's, there's a lot of notes. <laughs> so if you're someone who likes to read. Um, I linked like a video, X Celeste. This is like a really popular video where it just has a bit more visuals, but it's basically just a timeline where it covers like Jin and Map of the Soul, or Map of the Soul and just kind of where we are. It's basically the same thing in an hour. I feel like if you watch this a few times, you'll definitely understand everything. Um, game vids. This is just someone who like played the BTS storyline universe game, and they just kind of like did a playthrough of it. So you can kind of see how each timeline like played through. Because if you actually play the game, it's like choose this decision, and then it does this. And so instead of playing the game, you can watch someone else play. And it's just like a click through. I don't think there's like any commentary. Um, the, like a general order of the music video, if you want to kind of watch things of the BU, just in an order, there's that. 
And then Webtoon Envies, this is someone on YouTube who kind of edited together the Webtoon and then like clips from the music videos together. And so if it shows like them at the beach and then it'll show them like at the beach. But it kind of skips through some of the dialogue parts of the Webtoon. But since the Webtoon isn't like completely free and you just kind of want to look at how it connects, then that's a good link. So, any questions? <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> so, what happens if you have a lot of this? Sorry, because I've been working in homework and stuff on this. Um, um, so I've got a lot of this on the screen, but I'm like, with film out, what were some of your interpretations of, oh, of film out with film? Uh, yeah, that's a bit. It's, there's some like Japanese content where you're like, this is definitely BU related. And that one, I think that one is a like very, very open to interpretation. Cause you can still see like Jin as like a main character and it's kind of similar to fake love. But I don't know, I don't really have like, this happens and this happens. So you think it might be BU? Yeah, I think at least they, yeah, it's not, I don't think it's marked as official content, but you kind of see like references to other music videos, so. Probably. <laughs> I have a question. Um, I guess, like, who, who is, I don't know, the author or made all of it? Like, did you guys have any, like, any of the members have, like, impact on it? Or is there one person who's making it? Lots of people. I don't know if you know. I don't know, but I know there's, I think, like, a behind the scenes of one music video filming where someone's like, the theories you guys come up with are way too creative compared to what they actually know. So I think, I think the members are a bit, I don't think they have as much influence. They probably, I assume Jin at least knows like, oh, you're restarting this day, you're doing this. And I think they have a backstory, but I don't think they're directly involved in what's happening because I don't think Jungkook would be like, hey, can I like shoot the boys in this? And they'd be like, okay, <laughs> sure. So I just don't think they would want to do that, but yeah. Yes. Um, so why is Yumi and Jungkook's story so tragic in particular? Yeah, I think that is a hundred percent based on like just not being updated. Like if you watch the I Need You and like run music videos, I think that's where a lot of people stop and they're just like, Oh, they're fighting and that's it. But it, like in the notes, everyone has a happy ending except for Jungkook. Um, so people always say like, Young Cook is dead. Young Cook never got their happy ending. Well, technically they never did, but they're not dead. And they made up for some time. And it just really depends which timeline. And I think just a lot of people aren't updated, especially with like Map of the Soul stuff, because that doesn't have music videos. It doesn't really have anything to kind of watch. So you kind of have to dig for more content by like reading the notes and stuff. And I think just a lot of people don't know about it. Um, how did you become an expert on this? Had you been like, following along <laughs> from the beginning, or did you specifically decide you wanted to make this drive, or did they ask you, okay, will you give a presentation? <laughs> um, I think this is just interesting to me. I have been here since I was. I've been here since before they revealed that like Jin can do timelines and stuff. But I think it's just, it's a cool thing, especially because it like continues through things. It's not just like one thing. And I'm, I'm someone who likes to read. So I enjoy reading like the notes and other things. Yeah, so I've been in it a while. Like also just, I've had curiosity to explore further. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I've been like ARMY since like 2014. And I don't remember like when I started hearing about this. And like, do you think, or do you know maybe? Like, do you know how soon they start developing all of this? Because okay. it doesn't, I don't know. I just, I just don't know. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, so one thing, it's not confirmed BU content, but on their 2014 Red Bullet tour, they had like a VCR that showed, it was the first picture where they were like standing in the line, getting a detention. And so a lot of people are like speculate, it's probably happened in like 2014. And I've 
before like general confirmation, I used to think like danger like was part of the BU because there's some references there that you're like, huh, is this related to their characters? So I like it officially stuff started being marked as like BU content with like I need you and stuff. So 2015, but I think it was like 2014 they started hinting at it and then they just officially like this is everything because they weren't doing like dancing in the music videos and they're just acting things out. That's so crazy. <laughs> so I tried to get into the BU, but like when I found out that a couple of them died, I was like, oh, that's <laughs> 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 Yeah. Years, I'm like, I can't do that. Oh, you're so into it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I that's a really funny story, but when like the webtoon was coming out, I would like live tweet and stuff, and I had so many tweets blown up that were just pure dark humor. Like there was one <laughs> I would probably have to go back, but there was one part of the webtoon where like Yungi just got saved from the fire and he's in the hospital. And I tweeted, like, this is the only time we're going to see Yungi without a shirt. Because he was in the hospital with just an oxygen mask. <laughs> so, I don't know. I think, <laughs> I think I'm think i just, I'm able to distance myself from, like, them and their actual characters. Because, like, same thing with, like, Jungkook. Like, I know he wouldn't want to kill people. And I know they wouldn't want to be kill people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think one of the things is like reading the notes and just not seeing like any visual. Mm -hmm. So like just reading things first, you're like, okay, this is a name I recognize. I can put it to a face, but you're not like actually seeing things happen to them. Fiction. Yeah, fiction. Woo. <laughs> Still made me pass when I was reading. Yeah. <laughs> I it's awkward. Super heavy. Like, yeah, I got, I got like legit sad. Same. Yeah. I needed to like watch like the happy music videos after. <laughs> No, he like when he like in his head I think it's like glass shatters when he finally like is able to control his powers. But yeah, he just restarts. It's like something bad happened. Okay, restart. And because he has like the previous memories, he knows he's restarting. So yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Do, do we know if there's, like, so that's, that's all we know. We don't know if they're going to yeah. continue it. Like, because I could totally, I mean, if Hyde is smart, they know exactly how to get money. Yeah. But, like, they could totally redo this whole thing with JK. Exactly. And have JK so, do his own loops. Yeah, so I think even, I think the books were, like, the notes, too, was, like the latest update has been like 2019. So we don't really know much. I know in like the 20, like in the on music video and the behind the scenes, Jungkook is like, I have magical powers and I got kicked out of this town. And it's not confirmed to be B related, but I feel like they could have expanded onto that. But yeah, I think it's really open just to what they're gonna do next, whether or not the boys are directly involved or if it's just gonna be like books and webtoons. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So I'm going to preface this with uh, I know nothing. Um, cool. And, uh, so if this is like something that's officially sanctioned, which is what I'm picking up mm -hmm. uh, by that, <laughs> um, why, if they're making a K-drama based off of it, why would they have to change the name for legal reasons? Uh, I think it's mostly for the fans because, let's see, what is it? Yeah, it's because if you saw someone and they're like, oh, he's named like Kim Suk Jin and this is happening. And then if you're tweeting about it, or you're making articles about it. If you say like this, like if you're using their name as a character instead of them. Yeah, exactly. If you're saying like this, but you don't preference it with saying like episode five, take his dad. You're just like take his dad and then someone else sees that and is like, what happened? So I think it's just in terms of confusing the real like real life BTS and yeah the characters so yeah <laughs> okay,
Yeah. So, notes one is mainly like right before map of the soul, and then this is at like map of the soul to the end. So it's just it is kind of chronological, but like Jimin's what happened to Jimin wasn't revealed until the second one. So there's some like new information that gets presented in the second one that you didn't know, and so yeah, just they're kind of in order. I'm not really sure about the album notes. I don't think they really follow anything. I think they're just random stories because it's entered kind of just like a diary. So each of the notes in here is just like, it doesn't really tell you what time it takes place in. But I think one of the resources I have kind of puts it in that timeline. So you kind of know how it goes. Can I say thank you for putting all yeah. this <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so this is a link. It's just, it's a Google slide, and you can see my speaker notes. I didn't really write down everything I was talking about, but, and some of my pictures are weird because I didn't, like, use a different slide for each picture. But if you at least want to be able to access the resources that I've linked, then just, it's a quick QR code or link away. So, yeah. Ooh, thank you for having me. <laughs>